we are now going to look at the cost of debt. So once again, guys, the coupon rate is always used to calculate your cash flow. So when we are dealing with debt, the coupon rate is used to calculate the interest cash flow. And the cost of debt, which will be referred to as the market-related rate, the fee rate, or the rate on similar debt instruments, is used as the discount rate when calculating the market value of debt. And then we have already seen this before. If you are given the market value or the present value, you are then going to calculate the cost of debt. And if you are given the cost of debt, you are then going to calculate the market value or the present value. And the same logic applies to all previous sections that we've looked at. You should not waste valuable time performing unnecessary calculations. You won't always need to calculate the market value. It depends on the information provided in the question and the required. But you will need to calculate the cost of debt if it's not provided because you need the cost of debt in order to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. Remember, this principle that I'm talking about over here is going to be addressed at the end of the lecture where we cover our WAC calculations. So for now, you do always need the cost of debt if you are calculating the weighted average cost of capital. You don't necessarily always need the market value. Then the main difference between preference shares and debt is when we are dealing with debt, interest is tax deductible. So because interest is tax deductible, your interest cash flow and the cost of debt must always be after tax. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the interest cash flow and multiply it by 72% to get the after tax interest cash flow. That's obviously assuming a tax rate of 28% and you'll do exactly the same thing with the cost of debt. Multiply it by 72% in order to get the after-tax cost of debt. Now guys, debt can either be non-redeemable or it can be redeemable or lastly, it could be convertible. Now you need to determine up front what you're dealing with because your calculation changes depending on whether you have non-redeemable debt, redeemable debt, or convertible debt. Remember, we saw exactly the same thing with our preference shares. So let's first look at non-redeemable debt. Non-redeemable debt can either be a debenture that the company issues that they don't ever redeem, so they pay interest on those debentures in perpetuity, because the debentures are never repaid. Obviously, when the company issues the debentures, the investor buys debentures, and that results in a cash inflow for the company, whereas the interest being paid in perpetuity is a cash outflow for the company. However, a loan could also be classified as non-redeemable debt. But obviously, it can only be classified as non-redeemable debt if it does not require any repayment because then it will obviously be debt in perpetuity. So what would happen then is the company enters into a loan agreement to raise finance. There would be a cash inflow at that point in time. And if the loan is not repaid, they will have to pay interest on this loan in perpetuity, and that will obviously be a cash outflow. So if we are required to calculate either the market value or the cost of debt and we are dealing with non-redeemable debt, we are going to perform a perpetuity calculation because interest is paid in perpetuity. So if you are given the cost of debt, you're going to take your interest cash flow and divide by the cost of debt in order to get your market value. Alternatively, if you are given the market value, you can use that to calculate the cost of debt by taking the interest cash flow and dividing by the market value. Please just remember, this interest cash flow over there and the cost of debt over there must always be after tax. Because interest is tax deductible. Let's go and look at an example. Daenerys Limited obtained a loan to the value of 4 million rand two years ago. Interest at a rate of 10% per annum is payable on this loan. So if interest is payable at a rate of 10% per annum, that is your coupon rate, which you are going to use to calculate your interest 
cash flow. The loan is for an indefinite period with no fixed repayment date. So in other words, it is non-redeemable. So in this example, we are dealing with a non-redeemable loan. The loan is not publicly traded. However, analysts believe that the effective pre-tax cost is 8% per annum. Now guys, if any instrument is not publicly traded, then you won't have a market-related rate or a fair rate or a rate on similar loans. In that case, if it's not publicly traded, you'll have to use the rate that analysts believe is correct. So in this case, the analysts believe that the effective pre-tax cost is 8% per annum, so your cost of debt is 8% per annum. And remember, we use the cost of debt as our discount rate when calculating our market value. Please just note that the rate you've been given over here is pre-tax. It's before tax. So you've been given the cost of debt in this example, and you need to calculate the market value. All right, so this example shows you how to calculate the market value when you've been given the cost of debt. So using the perpetuity formula as per your lecture notes, we calculate the market value by taking our interest cash flow and dividing by the cost of debt. So the loan is for an amount of 4 million rand. The coupon rate, which we use to calculate our interest cash flow, is 10% per annum. Your interest cash flow must be after tax, so multiply by 72%. We then divide by the cost of debt, which is 8%. You were specifically told that that is pre-tax, so once again, multiply by 72% so that you get the after-tax cost of debt. You use the cost of debt as your discount rate when calculating the market value. Right, so we have a market value there of 5 million rand. Now the only difference between example 6.1 and 6.2 is in example 6.2, you are also still dealing with non-redeemable debt. But now, the market value or the present value has been given, and you need to calculate the cost of debt. So that's the only difference between the two. We are solving for the cost of debt. Now, all of the information is exactly the same as the previous example. So the only thing I want to point out to you, you must please work through this example. I just want to point out, when this interest cash flow over here, is after tax. You can see the interest cash flow is after tax because I'm multiplying by 72%. So that interest cash flow is after tax. If the interest cash flow is after tax, then the cost of debt that you calculate over here will be after tax. So please don't take your answer and multiply it by 72%. It is already after tax because your interest cash flow over there is after tax. Let's then look at redeemable debt. So with redeemable debt, once again, you could have debentures, but it could also be a loan. So let's first look at debentures. Initially, the company will issue debentures to raise finance. So investors will buy the debentures, and that will result in a cash inflow for the company. Then interest is going to be paid at regular intervals throughout the period, which will obviously be a cash outflow for the company. And then lastly, the debt is redeemable. So if we are dealing with a debenture, it means the debenture is going to be redeemed or repaid. So that would also obviously be a cash outflow for the company. Now, the logic here is exactly the same as the logic that we looked at with preference shares. Either you can perform this calculation using the cash flow function on your financial calculator, and this method can always be used. So you can look at all of the cash flows associated to the debentures, put them into your financial calculator, and either you're solving for the cost of debt or for the market value. Or if your annual cash flows are equal, you can also use the shortcut. And then a loan which requires repayment will also be classified as redeemable debt. So initially, when the company enters into the loan agreement to raise finance, they will obviously have a cash inflow. And then over the period of the loan, they will have cash outflows for any interest and capital repayments that need to be made. But you need to read the information provided in the question carefully to determine when those cash flows are actually going to take place. 
All right, let's go look at our examples. Daenerys Limited issued 100,000 debentures on the 1st of July 20x2 at an interest rate of 10%. So that is the coupon rate, which we are going to use to calculate the interest cash flow. The debentures have a coupon value of 40 rand each, so a par value of 40 rand each. So if they issued 100,000 debentures at a par value of 40 rand each, that gives us a total nominal value of 4 million rand. The debentures are redeemable. So in this example, we are dealing with redeemable debentures. At a premium of 5% on the 30th of June 20x9. So on 30 June 20x9, they will be redeemed for 4.2 million rand. You need to calculate the cost of the debentures at the 30th of June 20x6 if the current market value is 38 rand per debenture. So you need to calculate the cost of debt and you've been given the market value. So you can see that above. In this example, you have to calculate the cost of debt when the market value has been given. All right, guys, so once again, let's look at this on a timeline just so that we make sense of all of the cash flows. So they issued the debentures on the 1st of July 20x2. So on that date, there would have been an inflow of 4 million rand. They are going to be redeemed on the 30th of June 20x9. For a 5% premium, so here there will be an outflow of 4.2 million rand. And obviously over the period, they are going to pay interest on these debentures every year. So if we just look at that... And the interest is payable at a rate of 10%. We use the coupon rate to calculate the interest cash flow. So if the nominal value of the debentures is 4 million rand, that means every year interest of 400,000 rand will be paid. But please remember, guys, your cost of debt and your interest cash flow must always be after tax. So just multiply that by 72% to get the after tax interest cash flow. All right, so obviously interest will be paid over the period. All right, and we need to calculate the market value at the 30th of June 20x6. So we are calculating the market value at this date. So please remember, all past cash flows are ignored in this calculation. We only look at future cash flows. So the future cash flows will be for 20x7, 20x8, and 20x9. So if we use the cash flow function on your financial calculator, there's the interest for 20x7, 20x8, and 20x9. There's the redemption, which happens at 30 June 20x9. All past cash flows are ignored in your calculation. Only look at future cash flows. We were given the market value in this example, 38 rand per debenture multiplied by 100,000 debentures. 
So the present value or the market value at the 30th of June 20x6 is 3.8 million rand. Input all of those cash flows into your financial calculator and solve for the internal rate of return, which will give you the after-tax cost of debt. So please note, guys, because the interest cash flow in your calculation over here, that interest cash flow is after-tax, it means that the cost of debt you've calculated here is also after-tax. So don't multiply it again by 72%. Then because these annual cash flows over here are equal every year, you could have also used the shortcut to perform this calculation. And you don't need to use the cash flow function on your financial calculator. Right, but you guys can have a look at that. It's all the same calculations, just a different way of performing exactly the same calculation. Then in the next example, guys, the only difference between this example and the last example is in this example, the cost of debt is given and you now need to calculate the market value. So that's the only difference between the two. Once again, you can see the calculation can either be performed using the cash flow function on your calculator or because the annual cash flows are equal, you can use the shortcut. You can see the interest every year is exactly the same as the previous example. You only look at your future cash flows. That is the redemption amount at the 30th of June 20x9. Now, you don't have the market value. You are trying to solve for the market value. So you input all of these cash flows into your financial calculator. This interest cash flow over here is after tax. The discount rate that you are going to use is the after tax cost of debt. So in this example over here, you were given the cost of debt. You were told that the pre-tax rate on similar debentures is 15%. So be careful, that is the pre-tax rate. You need to multiply it by 72% to get the after-tax cost of debt. So you use the after-tax cost of debt as your discount rate, and you calculate your market value.